Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. I've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and advanced mechanical trading algorithms, such as our 21 SPY and ES mean reversion systems with about 90% winning trades, and of course our amazing uh, KISS systems, which you gotta check out. You go to the systems area, KISS STS tables, you can see some of the new the systems that raise their smart trailing stops today, BABA, Dot moved from 7020 to 7470, CrowdStrike, MRNA, government vaccine, I call it. Anyway, I don't want to get into that, but stop moving up from 9890 all the way to 10990. So a nice Jepinet stop. That trade is up 21.4%. Let's actually take a look at that system. So the system went long here on March 11th. Let's see where it went long. Had a stop, moved it up, moved it up just recently. Nice gain today. Again, great resource. If you're not a subscriber to Breakpoint Trades, you should really check those out. Been a very awesome product. Anyway, going to do, this is going to be a technical analysis review of the market. It is May 2nd, Thursday evening. And this is our back-end recorder for our website, which I'm going to go ahead and get started right now. Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. This is the Thursday, May 2nd newsletter. Steve and I switched days from Wednesday to Thursday. My daughter's now playing softball. She has practice on Wednesdays, so that's why we've switched. And it'll be that way most weeks. Anyway, again, it's the newsletter for Thursday evening, May 2nd. Table of contents is divided into five major sections. Again, the same general uh, theme as I always keep, we first discuss, you know, our opening comments, we discuss the general market, we look at the major indexes in a top-down fashion from the S&P, the Dow, um, NASDAQ, IWM, we'll look at a few indicators, we'll look at a few sectors, again, I'm not going to go through all the sectors, we'll look at just a few of them, we'll look at the US dollar, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, commodities, precious metals, GDX, and we'll follow up with a few trade ideas. As you know, Today, after hours, Apple reported, and not surprisingly, they're up fairly strongly in the after hours market. Apple is currently trading around 184 the last time I looked in the aftermarket hours. It closed around 172, so nice jump there. Tomorrow, Friday, we have the ISM non-manufacturing data and monthly job payroll report. That comes out at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, so potentially market moving, All right? Again, markets had a nice rally today. S&P 500 was up 0.9%, NASDAQ up 1.5%, and the Russell gained 1.8%. For the week, all the major indexes are trading down still, except for the Russell, which is up 0.8%, but you know the, the NASDAQ, despite being up 1.5% today, is still down 1% for the week. S&P 500 is still down 0.7% for the week. Again, guys, after a nearly one-to-one -one symmetry bounce in the markets, the S&P 500 went up to 51.23. We warned about a pullback, and we saw a deep 110 pullback retracement from those highs. Okay, so far, we got a higher low, but we were expecting that pullback, and that's what we got. Now we'll see where this bounce takes us. There's numerous options, wave counts, which I'll discuss briefly. We don't get too much into that because folks tend to get bogged down in wave counts. And it's really, it's more of a mapping and there's always multiple options. It's better to focus on supply and resistance zones, demand and support zones, okay? All right, let's go ahead and move on. So item number two shows the index sector table, what transpired today and this week. As I already stated, you know, all the indexes were up strongly today, especially the Russell 2000 up 1.8%, NASDAQ up 1.5%. Again, nice moves here. Most things, are, the indexes are still down for the week, except for the Russell. Okay. As far as the major market sectors, the 21 sectors, the majority were up, only three were down, drugs, healthcare, and materials. Those drugs and healthcare tends to be a little more defensive. Otherwise, for the week, we got about a 50-50 mixture of up and down here. 
the weakest sectors, the strongest pullback lately has been the energy market, not surprisingly with the pullback in crude oil. Oil services down 4.3% for the week. It was up 1.1% today. And XLE energy down 3.3% for the week. Currencies, US dollar down 0.76% today, down a half percent for the week. Cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin, as you know, broke that shelf support that we've been showing. It did bounce back, but it is currently finding some resistance at that broken support level. Again, we'll talk about that when we get to those charts further down in the newsletter. As far as the commodities, the DBC, that's the index, is up 0.35% today. Otherwise, it's still down about 2.5% for the week. Again, big weakness this week, like I said, on the energy area. Crude oil is a big component of that, down 3.5% today, down 5.8% for the week. Natural gas down 3% today, up just slightly for the week. Weakness in copper, agriculture. So we have finally seen a nice pullback in a lot of these commodities that have been on fire. And as far as the precious metals market, kind of bifurcation here, gold up 0.3%, silver up 0.4%, GDX the miners up 0.8%. But again, strong losses for the week. As far as the bond market, the 10-year uh, treasury yield down about a half percent today. Next, item number three shows the economic news calendar. As already discussed, like I said, Friday, first Friday of the month, you always have that non-farm job payroll report. That's a big one. And of course, we have the ISM non-manufacturing PMI. So those would be things to watch tomorrow morning on Friday. Okay, let's go and jump to these charts. First chart below here is Apple. So Apple, as you know, they reported earnings. It was in this downtrend channel. Again, nice move up in earnings. It's basically up around this box area that I showed, just shy of the 61.8 fib. We'll see how it opens tomorrow, but that is where it's trading in after hours, right around 184, so right around this area. So we're looking at a nice gap up tomorrow. Next, look at some of the other recent big cap tech stocks that reported. Here's Amazon, which reported earlier in the week back initially but it's bounced back now it's retesting this broken channel line we'll see if it finds some resistance there or not and again the previous week it found support at that demand zone below as you can see next interesting one chart verse six here's amd they reported on tuesday again amd unlike the other ones had a big correction all the way down from 227 just in march recently down to you know about 140 so that's a pretty good haircut Let's see anyway it's coming into an interesting area i think now if the market holds up or even wants to go to another high this could be an interesting area now you have the 200 day moving average just right here i would feel better if it tagged that honestly but it's pretty close you also have a demand zone you can see it comes in right around the 200 day moving average just below it so along with a little divergence showing up on the RSI, a little bit on the MACD, looking a little more interesting now. Next, Trevor seven, here's a zoomed in daily view of AMD, just a cleaner view. And you can see it's came down, you got a clean channel. You have a little MACD divergence, a little bit of RSI divergence. Got a big support zone down in here, demand zone, right around the 200 day moving average. So it could be an interesting area to take a shot at it. Again, if you think the market is going to go back to the highs. Next. Trevor 8, um, another one that reported yesterday was Starbucks, and they got absolutely annihilated. Take a look at this chart. Huge gap down yesterday on the earnings, for the earnings, and of course, a little bounce back today. Zooming out to a bigger time frame, here's a weekly chart of Starbucks. You can see huge down candle into a big support demand zone back to the 2022 lows. So it is a pretty big area, could offer some support, pretty ugly otherwise. Zooming out even further, here's a monthly chart. This is a linear chart, but you can see, you could draw an uptrend line from the, essentially the 2009 lows. And that comes in down there around the mid 60s. Wonder if that'll be tested over time. Anyway, let's go and move to the index charts. So chart number 11, here's the daily S&P 500, which again was up about 45, 46 points today. 
this has just simple fibs. Again, last week we we had that perfect ABC symmetry bounce back to the underside of the 50-day moving average. We talked about that being resistance. We talked about that being a perfect one-to-one -one bounce. And to look for a pullback. And we got a pullback. Someone questioned me on that today, but we had a 110 point pullback from that high at 51.23 all the way to you know today's lows. So that's a heck of a pullback. Now we'll see where this goes. I'll show you a few options. You can see again, we stalled initially around that 50 day moving average. Assuming prices stay up tonight, I'm expecting at least a gap up tomorrow in the indexes because of Apple and where things are trading right now. Next. Here's a chart for 12. Here's a two hour time frame. It has a few wave counts. Again, I really don't like getting too much into these guys because some of you obsess about it, you know, and then you, you get bogged down in it. You know, to me, these are just guides. There's always multiple options. All right. But anyway, here's a couple of things. So first off, you had what essentially was a perfect ABC one-to-one -one symmetry from that 49.53 low to the 51.23 high, okay? And then we pulled back, and it was a pretty deep retracement. So that was a good 110-point pullback. And we bounced today. I'm expecting to move up tomorrow. So there's actually three different options here, but one option would be you put in a high at the ABC. This was an ABC. I don't favor that. I haven't favored that. Uh, the one I have been favoring was this was an A, B, C of A was looking for a deep retracement of a B. So I'm looking at the red mark here, which we clearly got. And then we're now moving up in this wave C, which, you know, I'm projecting maybe up around the 61 FIB, maybe even further, right? Maybe even the 5170 area, then come down again. The bullish view is in green. You have a nested one, two, one, two. And we're now going to go up in three. For this to be wave three, price needs to power up. Okay, wave threes are strong. They're the strongest trending moves. So that's how you'll know if it's a wave three. If you go here and it just it goes like crazy, that would be a wave three. Otherwise, I'm more in this camp with this larger A, B, C option. Okay. Again, we'll you know we don't trade off of these necessarily. We trade off support and demand zones, supply and resistance zones, okay? But otherwise, that's what I'm favoring at the moment and have favored. Next, chapter 13, here's a daily view of the S&P. Again, we had that perfect little ABC up at 51.23, nice retracement. So again, I'm favoring at least to move up for a, some sort of wave B that again, could retrace to 61.8 or even go higher, right? The bullish view would be in green where we just go back to a new high. Right? Again, when we pointed out the bearish moving average ribbon pinch squeeze early in the week, we did get a nice 110 point pullback from there. Right? Now we bounce today, expect to bounce up tomorrow. Next, driver 14, here's a clean daily view of the S&P. Again, this is a resistance zone, supply zone up here. We're likely test that tomorrow. We'll see if we can power through that. We also have the 50 day moving average there. Trevor 15, here's the SPY daily with support and resistance zones. Again, we stalled right at the resistance. There's a resistance zone up here, which I'm expecting to test tomorrow. And you can see on that deep 110 point retracement, we bounced off that demand support zone. Next, Jarber 16, here's the daily KISS system. Again, it's still flat. It went flat a few weeks ago. We had a great trade from the October lows to you know mid-April there. Made a nice trade. It is still flat. On this chart, you can see I have two arrows. You have the ATR, which again, on a, a decent wave B up, I could see that being tested. We tested the 50-day last time. So the, the small red that moving average, that's the 50 day simple moving average. The ATR up there is your bigger resistance. And we talked about that moving average squeeze. We did get a nice pullback from there. We bounced back today a little bit. Chapter 17, here's the four time frames. Again, like I said on the daily, we have our resistance up here at the 50 day, the ATR. We have support 
on the half day on the ATR there. We have a little buy cycle showing up on the 130 minute here. We had a resistance cycle the other day, which price pulled back from. We're, we now have a support cycle. We'll see if we can bounce from that or not. Trevor 18, here's a half day chart with the fibs. Trevor 19, here's the two hour chart we were showing early in the week. Again, like I said, we had a perfect one to one symmetry move to here. So for us to call, a pullback from there was very logical. It was a 110 point pullback. So again, perfectly pullback there. Now I expect maybe tomorrow we retest this area. Next, chart 20, here's a 30 minute chart just showing kind of a channel, this kind of ABC move up. Chart 21, here's a 30 minute chart from the weekend newsletter. We had rallied all the way to that downtrend line where we stalled, pulled back. You can see price got around the 61.8 FIB. There was also a demand zone in here. We bounced off of it. Now we'll see tomorrow. Watch this downtrend line. If we were if we gap above that, that could be a breakaway gap. Next, Trevor 22, moving to the triple Qs, up 1.3% today. Here add a little channel to monitor. Okay. Resistance is this bigger area above around the uh, four, and it's a zone around 437 to 440. Chapter 23, here show, this shows you that larger potential wave count where we're potentially in this larger wave four. Again, for this to play out, ultimately we would need to form a lower high of some sort and then come down again. But again, there's other, like I said, there's counts that we could go right to another high. So it's just an option, but um, we'll see what develops. Jarber 24, here's the KISS system. Again, no changes. Remember, this went to cash as well a couple weeks ago. Still in cash. No changes. Jarber 25, here's the four time frame. Similar look to the S&P, quite honestly. Let's move on. Jarber 26, here's the triple Qs, two hour time frame. Again, you can see that perfect ABC symmetry bounce to that 433.76 area. Pulled back. And um, the bigger resistance now, guys, is up in here, 61.8 FIB at 435.50, all the way up to around 442. Those are your bigger resistance areas, supply zones. Chapter 27, here's a 60 minute chart, kind of a coil look. We'll see if what happens tomorrow. The, on the bulls, the bulls would hope for a gap above this downtrend line, that would be a breakaway gap. Chapter 28, Here's the Russell, IWM. As you know, the Russell had this absolute textbook rising wedge, A, B, C, D, E. True wedges are five waves like this, and they always have MACD divergence. Again, I've, already, I've stated this so many times, guys, but if you ever draw a wedge that you think is a wedge, but you don't have MACD divergence, I guarantee you the wedge is incomplete. Okay, because wedges always have this divergence. A little pro tip there. So we've bounced off this demand zone near the 200 day moving average. One option guys, if we were to have a deeper retracement here, let me see if I can draw this in. Okay. Would be, you know, if we were to have a pretty deep retracement, but still form a lower high, you could form a right shoulder of a head and shoulder or something like that. So that's one option to just be aware of. Next. And that does it for the general market, guys. Uh, moving on, Charber 29, here's the VIX. The VIX continues to melt down. No changes there. Charber 30, here's the, the S&P 500 with the SVXY. That's the inverse VIX. Again, these two move together, but the reason that we continue to show this is the SVXY has been tending to lead. Okay, the SVXY is in black. And... You know, you could see it started leading down earlier before the S&P back here. And it started bouncing stronger here before the market did. So it tends to lead. It's something just to watch over time. Next, moving on, looking at a few of the sectors. Again, I'm just going to cover a few. Here's the XLK technology. Remember, this descending triangle broke down a couple weeks ago. It finds support at the 38 point. 38.2% FIB. There was also an open gap which was filled. We bounced back 
last week into that resistance area. Nice deep retracement, a little bounce today. Now I'm expecting a bounce up. Again, this area around here, that broken support is now resistance. So just because if we go up tomorrow, doesn't mean we're gonna go to a new high. This is a big area to contend with, okay? Trevor 32, here's the semiconductors. They had a nice bounce up into supply resistance zone where they pulled back from, okay? Trevor 33, here's XBI Biotech. Remember I pointed this out as a low risk long a week ago, with that RSI divergence into the 200 day moving average and around this demand zone, and it's had a nice bounce up here. Trevor 34, here's LABU, the triple long ETF. That was the leverage way to play it. Trevor 35, XLU Utilities, continues moving nicely. This has been a strong sector lately. Looking at the energy market, it's had a really nice correction. Here's XLE Energy ETF. What you have here so far is a perfect three-wave pullback, potential ABC. That's potentially bullish if, unless this turns into a five-wave. There's a little... Um, demand zone right here. There's an open gap below, which would be targets if, the, if this goes down again. But for now, we have at least three ways trying to find a little support at the 50-day moving average. Crude oil has been extremely weak, so that's not helping it. Trevor 37, oil services. Remember, I had this little bear flag look to it. That obviously played out. Trevor 38, XOP, S&P 500, oil and Gas expiration ETF. Again, you got a perfect ABC, which is playing out. Next, another area I want to look at, guys, is the emerging markets, which have been really strong. So, yen, that's the triple long ETF for China. FXI is the uh, one time long. That area has been moving up nicely. China has been in the toilet so for quite a long time. So, not surprising that it's having a decent rally and a nice move in this up. 16.5% today. Now there's a kind of a big supply zone up here, but it's a pretty large range. Chart looks really good. Trevor 40, here's Baba. You all know that one, Alibaba. Nice break out of this range on expanding volume. I love the weekly charts. Let's take a look at that. Here's the weekly, and I posted this before weeks ago. Again, Baba, you know, it's had a hell of a haircut from the 2020 highs when it was up there at $300. But what you've had developed for the last year and a half is essentially this not long falling wedge. We're starting to break that wedge now. So again, unless things fall apart, could be a maybe a lower, could be some sort of swing trade with a stop, not wide stop initially, if you're willing to give it that room. Moving on to commodities, chart 42, DBC. Remember that's the index. Here's the various things in an index. You can see kind of like the energy area, had a perfect ABC pullback right into this broken downtrend line, 200 day moving average and rising 50 days. So a lot of confluence of potential supports there. Oh, and the 50% FIB. So you have essentially four technical areas here of importance. One, the downtrend, broken downtrend line. Two, 50% FIB. Three, 200 day moving average. Four, 50 day moving average. So a lot of things, you have three waves. Trevor 43, here's the weekly. Remember, it's in this weekly coil, which we did pull back from the top range of the coil. So we're around the middle portion of the pattern. Trevor 44, here's crude oil. Finally broke that channel yesterday, trading down around the 50% FIB now. Trevor 45, UNG natural gas ETF. Still has this wedge look with the MACD divergence. Hasn't broken out of it yet. This Again, this is notoriously difficult to trade, guys. These natural gas ETFs, quite honestly, and they give you these annoying K1s. I only trade this in my IRA because then I don't have to worry about that K1. Otherwise, you got to deal with that crap during taxes. So anyway, still has this wedge. I am long a little bit of this. We'll see if we can break out or not. Driver 46, copper. This is the weekly view. Nice pullback down about 2% this week. Again, it's had a hell of a move, so I'm not surprised to see a little pullback. Driver 47, here's the daily. Again, it's had a heck of a run, so finally coming in a little bit. Close below to 9 EMA today. Maybe the 20-day moving average would be your next target. Simple guide. Driver 48, DBA agriculture. Like I said, a lot of these agriculture things have been coming in. 
down 10% this week. Again, this cup and handle pattern played out absolutely beautiful. It was textbook. I put this out in January. It was a hell of a trade. Hopefully some of you guys took it, but also hopefully it took profits because you would have given a lot back this week if you had. But I do think it'll be another buying opportunity sometime. Scriber 49, here's the daily. Again, a hell of a pullback. We had that MACD divergence up there, RSI divergence. Now there is a little demand zone here. We're below the 50-day moving average. This could be an area to dip your toe in. I'm not sure how, this isn't a huge consolidation, so this doesn't offer a lot of support, but a little bit. Otherwise, below that, your bigger support is down in this range, you know, anywhere from the 22, 50 all the way to, you know, 20, run a 200 day moving average would be your bigger support zones. Next, Trevor 50, here's Coca. Again, speaking of parabolic moves, remember I was talking about this a while back, had an absolutely parabolic textbook move there. That last move set up a pretty obvious MACD divergence. Well, again, as I state here, parabolic moves are unsustainable. So finally it's coming home to roost. Okay, nice sell off so far. Next, one commodity that looks pretty good to me, though, is uranium. I pointed this out the other day in that coil. It had a nice pullback in the coil on Tuesday, but it still held the coil, and that's bounced back. Again, it's still inside the coil, so it could still do anything here, but it still looks pretty good to me. Driver 52, here's the weekly. Again, you can see the bigger coil on the weekly. You can see that falling wedge from early last year that played out. The start of the bull market was back there in 2020. Chapter 53, here's the monthly view of uranium. Again, we became bullish back in late 2020 off of this multi-year base break called a Stan Weinstein break. We had a big coil broke out last year. And honestly, if you want a longer term target, it's always been up in here in the 40s. That would be a big percentage move. Moving on to the bond market, here's a uh, 10-year treasury yield, Charber 54. Nice pullback so far from the upper portion of that channel. That's helping the market a bit. If, if rates start pulling back here strongly, that could help the market. Charber 55, here's TLT 20-year bonds. Remember, they move opposite of rates, so you have the inverse pattern. You have a downtrend channel instead of an uptrend channel. We bounced off that lower trend line of the channel. That was probably a good area to take along with a tight stop. And finally, Trevor 56, high yield corporate. Market tends to move with this. This is at a nice move off this demand zone. Not too far from the highs. That's a positive for the market if you want a positive thing. Next, let's move to cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, here's Bitcoin. Remember, Bitcoin had been worrying, been warning that it looked weak. Talked about this on the weekend and last week. It did lose this shelf support yesterday. Pulled back to around the mid-range there. Then it's bounced back here, but it's still below the shell support, which is resistance. Jabber 58, here's the two hour view. You can see how we lost that self support. It got into the thin zone, didn't go down. There's a, there was a little support, which I'm not showing here, right around this, uh, this area. I don't have it drawn in there, but you can see right around that 57,000. So we clearly did bounce off of that. We're basically back testing that previous, that broken support. We'll see if it offers a resistance or not, or we just go right back up. Chapter 59, here's BITI. That's the inverse Bitcoin ETF. It did give a trade here, kind of out of the space, obviously pulling back a little bit today. Next, Chapter 60, US dollar. Had a slight break out of this little flag yesterday, but stalled once again at that resistance zone. And nice pullback the last couple days. Driver 61, Japanese yen. So with that dollar pulling back, the yen's bouncing here. Talked about this being quite oversold. You know, we stated that they're probably going to have to do some sort of intervention, and be on the lookout for a bounce. And we got a bounce here. Driver 62, here's the tradable ETF, FXY for the Japanese yen. This is the way to play it. I bought a little bit of this early in the week. Again, it's got a lot of resistance now to contend with up here, but to me, it looked like a low risk long so we're sold. Moving to precious metals, chapter 63, gold, and down slightly today. Still overall, potentially working on some sort of ABC, maybe a wave four, maybe something else. But it was quite overbought a few weeks ago, as we talked about, and it's been working that off. 
Chapter 64, there's the weekly view down 1.6% for the week. Again, longer term, it's had a big breakout. I expect it to go up to much higher prices over time, but it got extended and it's in a pullback right now. Chapter 65, there's that two hour view with that completed wave count we showed back in early April, which still appears to be the good count. Chapter 66, silver. Remember, silver broke out of this big ascending triangle pattern, rallied up to 29, almost 30 bucks, pulled back. It's now, today's lows retested that previous breakpoint now support. To me, as I stated that with this three wave pullback, that was a low risk area to make, start buying a little silver back. Chapter 67, there's the weekly view of silver. Again, perfect ABC pattern that it broke out of. It's pulled back to back test it there. I took a little shot there buying, dipping my toe buying some. In Chapter 68, there's the tradable ETF. Again, if it continues pulling back, your bigger support area is down in this range, this demand zone. Next, Sharper 69, GDX, still just kind of chopping around here, up slightly today. Sharper 70, GDX on the 60-minute time frame, channel to monitor. Finally, guys, let's talk about some trade setups. So Sharper 71, FUTU. I don't really, I don't know anything about this company. It was a stock, it was a pattern that showed up on my scan last week. It had a really nice long base here, big coil, so I posted it you know, bought some, but this has been on our watch list. Tried to trigger last week, nice breakout this week, up 8% already. Now where could this go over time? It could, the next target area that I'm targeting is around 100 to 110 potentially. That's your next supply zone. Again, if you're gonna hold this, this is, gonna, this is a weekly chart, this would be a, for a bigger trade, swing trade. I would look into the fundamentals, do a little research on that, because I'm just showing you the chart. I don't know anything really about the fundamentals. I'm just looking at the chart. But it looks pretty decent otherwise. Trevor 72, CENX was a coil from last week that broke down for a nice short. Trevor 73, PTCT was a long idea from Monday. Broke out yesterday, gave you a nice trade. Going back some today. Trevor 74, Hertz. This is a low, long idea I put out on Monday. Up a little bottom support here, washout play. Slight trigger today over that resistance. Driver 75, TMDX, long idea from Monday. Now, again, unless you were long already, it would have been hard to chase that gap. I didn't, but otherwise, the long did play out. Nice gap up and a big follow through. Likely a gap on earnings there. Driver 76, FE, first energy was another long idea I put out. Worth playing out here. Now it's back above resistance. Trevor 77, CZOO, little flag pattern here. Little move out of the pattern today, pulled back, still looks okay. Good volume patterns here. Trevor 78, Walmart. Someone mentioned this on the trading community. Got kind of a nice pattern here, kind of a wedge look to it. Got again, re main resistance is the downtrend line. It's got to clear that, get over these moving averages, but looks interesting. And Trevor 79, Home Depot, got a nice haircut from those March highs. Right now, you got a tight coil here at the 200-day moving average. This could give you a trade either way. You could get a nice long here, go long, put a tight stop just below the, below the coil, or you could short it if we were to break the coil down to the downside instead. All right, guys, that'll do it. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Quick check on the futures. ES futures are up about 14 points here in the after hours. and um, NQ futures, NASDAQ 100 futures are up about 100. A lot of that due to Apple. All right, guys, have a wonderful evening. Thanks for all your support on YouTube. Please, please like, subscribe, comment, especially comment. That really helps me and do the likes. All right. And again, if you're just a YouTube viewer, the thing that really helps us is if you subscribe to our web page service. All right. All right, guys, have a wonderful evening. Let's see out what happens what those jobs numbers and ISM numbers look like on Friday. Take care.